Now, still on matters drought, Crisis the Answer Ministry CITAM is launching an ambitious program to reach out to thousands of families affected by the ongoing drought. The ASAL region of Kenya has endured three severe droughts in the last decade. The current drought has been the most severe and longest, with widespread livelihood losses and massive displacement of populations. CITAM is joining both the local and international organizations to distribute food and non-food items to Kenyans. Our very own Antonio Mondi has met with CITAM Head of Advocacy, Reverend Anthony McKenna, as the church highlights his elaborate plan to alleviate the situation. Indeed, Kian Kimani, thank you uh, for that. Uh, Kenya is going through a tough moment right now where it's facing a severe drought. And uh, in the last decade, we've seen uh, three uh, severe droughts, but this is actually uh, the worst uh, uh, drought to hit uh, the country. And of course, I'm joined by the head of uh, social action and advocacy in CITAM to just talk about uh, this matter's uh, drought and just tell us uh, what action uh, the church is taking, what direction uh, does, uh, should the country take next? And his name is Reverend Anthony McKenna. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. And thank you, viewers. Uh, this country right now is going through a tough moment uh, just after the election, and uh, things are happening. Uh, drought has hit over 20, over 20 counties right now are in the brink of starvation. What do you make of this situation in the country? Thank you for the question. It's actually over 23 counties. Mm -hmm. Over 23 counties have been in serious trouble. Yes. We normally depend for this kind of information, we depend on the National Drought Management Authority. That is the authority that gives us information on how the situation is. Mm -hmm. And they are the ones who in September 2022 mm -hmm. did a forecast and said at the rate where we are at, by the month of October, we would have 23 of our counties under alert. Mm -hmm. We are now on the 10th, 11th, 12th of October, and that has happened. Mm -hmm. And if you permit me, I'll let you know which counties mm -hmm. are under serious alert. Yes. We have Isiolo, mm -hmm. Mandera, Samburu, Kajiado, Tharakanithi, mm -hmm. Turkana, Wajiro, Laikipia, Tana River, mm -hmm. and Mercebait. And adding to that, we have Embu, Garissa, Kitui, Makweni, Meru, Narok, Nyeri, Taita Taveta, mm -hmm. Kwale, and Kilifi. Mm -hmm. Then we, when we were waiting for this, I got confirmation that Tiati, which is in East Pokot, is also under siege. So we include in that list Baringo, West Pokot, and Lamo. Mm -hmm. All these are areas that are under serious threat a population of more than 4 million people. Are we doing enough as a country in the intervention measures to ensure that uh, uh, we, are, we avert this uh, kind of situation right now because families are distressed? Uh, is the country really doing enough? We have had a response in emergencies many times. Mm -hmm. And once the emergencies are done and the matter settles, there are fundamental issues yeah. that are not given attention. When we listened to the people on the ground, we were in um, Archer's Post, came back yesterday since Monday. They are telling us this is the worst in the last 40 years. So to answer your question, yes, we respond to emergencies, but we don't seem to respond to dealing with the matter so that we don't find ourselves on, on and off, on and off, which has been the track for mm. quite a while. What are some of the gaps that uh, uh, have been identified, uh, especially in dealing with uh, such kind of disasters, uh, such kind of situations? And uh, maybe we'll join that with what the role of the church is in uh, alleviating uh, such uh, situations. The first role is realizing that Kenya is said to be an agricultural-based um, uh, economy. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we do very little to encourage that agriculture. Mm -hmm. The farmer is complaining and has been complaining for a while, complaining about fertilizers, complaining about the cost, complaining about the market. So over a period of time, the farmer has no incentive to grow anything anymore because what they grow does not get to the market. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And when it goes to the market, it doesn't get sold. We import at the cost of killing our own farmers. Mm -hmm. That is one side that has not been very good. Mm -hmm. The other side that needs to be looked at in terms of our agriculture is making sure that there is no politics in agriculture. We hear of cartels. A cartel is an arrangement where the middle man or the middle lady gets more money than the person who is doing the producing. We need to help the farmer mm -hmm. get to grow and get to market. Mm -hmm. The other challenge is what the late Professor Wangari Madai kept on telling us. Mm -hmm. She said, and I quote her, nature is very generous, but nature is also very unforgiving. We have not been good in our matters nature. We have cut down trees. We have messed up our environment. And therefore, we are not attracting the cycles that you and I grew knowing. Mm -hmm. We were almost very sure that there would be long rains between mid-March, the entire April, going on to uh, April, March, and even May, June. Mm -hmm. We knew almost to the date that we would have the short rains beginning either mid-October, mm -hmm. the entire November, and quite some in December. Mm -hmm. That has been totally thrown off balance. So we need to do something in terms of our environment. Mm -hmm. We have cut down trees in discriminatory. Mm -hmm. And so nature is doing what the late Professor Wangari said. Mm -hmm. It's very unforgiving. unforgiving. Very, very unforgiving. Yes. You are the head of uh, social action and advocacy at a crisis the answer ministry is CETAM. Yes. Uh, what uh, is the church doing in this season is, uh, we, of course, we've seen donations from different organizations. We have seen the government trying also to uh, appeal for assistance. We've seen uh, Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa doing that. Uh, what is, is, is CETAM doing in this season to ensure that uh, uh, this situation is mitigated? I'll respond two ways. One, social action and advocacy in CETAM is the demonstration of God's love to the poor, the weak and the oppressed, and the demonstration is through care, help, and social justice. Mm -hmm. How is SITAM responding to this situation? We are responding two ways. One, we have a partner in the person of ERDO, E-R-D-O. ERDO is the Canadian Emergency Relief and Development Overseas, and in partnership with Social Action and Advocacy uh, Ministry here in SITAM, they have given us some funds to be able to focus in Marsabit. Marsabit is one of the largest counties. Yes. And it's one of the most hard hit of the counties. Mm -hmm. So the funds that they have given to us will give attention to six villages. And I will name the villages so that the persons who are viewing may be aware of the villages that we are giving attention to. Yeah. We have Matarba, we have Jirime, we have Goro Rukesa, we have Gargasa, we have Jaldesa, and we have the township itself. Mm -hmm. And what we are doing is that we will give attention to 9,600 families for seven months. We will be doing cash transfers through the funds that are being given to us by Eldo. Mm -hmm. And the reason we are doing the seven, seven months from the 15th of this month is so that, one, we are praying that the short rains will happen mm -hmm. so that we handle the months between October, hoping that the rains will come. Mm -hmm. We will handle them November, December. Mm -hmm. Trust that we'll be able to cross with them January, February, March, and April so that we bridge between the short rains and the long rains that should come March, April, and May. Mm -hmm. So we are targeting uh, the most vulnerable. We are targeting the mothers. We are targeting the, uh, the, the very aged and the children mm -hmm. for the cash transfers mm -hmm. for that period of time. Mm -hmm. But because the funding is locked into Marsabit, the second approach is what we discussed on Tuesday at the Overseers platform. Mm -hmm. And the bishop, presiding bishop, permitted us to now do the second approach where we are calling for an appeal mm -hmm. to our members, to our friends, to do cash and food so that we may start to move the food caravans mm -hmm. 
food caravans into areas where our churches in those areas will mobilize, but we also partner with other churches mm -hmm. where they already are activating responses mm -hmm. so that we can complement what they are doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, this kind of appeal that you're uh, asking, uh, how is it going to be channeled to the uh, social advocacy program? The appeal is two-way. Mm -hmm. One, we are doing a food appeal, and the food appeal is basically maize, rice, beans, dengue, cooking oil, OG mix for the children. Mm -hmm. We are making an appeal beginning now that as many as are listening to us would begin to bring food in any of our sitam assembly then we'll be able to assemble, put the caravans together, uh, dis designate what goes where, depending on what the need is. Mm -hmm. And so the first appeal is food. In the sitam assembly, drop of the food there, indicate this is for the emergency response to the drought, mm -hmm. and the missions office and social action and advocacy mm -hmm. will be able to put all this together and then put in the caravan. Mm -hmm. The second appeal is through cash donations. We have a designated pay bill number and we'll ask that those who are listening to us would note this number, 693-371. 693-371 is the pay bill number. Yeah. If you send your cash donation there, it will be channeled to the missions and social action and advocacy. We'll be able to buy the foods that we have indicated and include in the foods that we have been given mm -hmm. and then we'll be able to do the caravan. Okay. Sitam also through the bishop's office is considering supplementing mm -hmm. within a week or two. They will be able to tell us what they have decided to top up on what will come. Mm -hmm. And at the close of the two weeks, we'll be able to inform the persons what has come and what is being taken away. Okay. And uh, I remember a while ago in 2020 when COVID hit, yes. uh, also Sitam was able to give yes. donations to our families across the country. Yes. Uh, are you paying special attention to uh, a particular group because I remember at that time uh, you paid special attention to religious leaders and pastors. Is this particular program also going to focus on religious leaders and uh, uh, mi missionaries uh, that have been affected by uh, drought in various counties? Thank you for that question. During the COVID, mm -hmm. the reason there was a response in what we call Barikim Chungaji is our realization that most of the churches upon closing down mm -hmm. denied the pastors the welfare and the support that they would generally get as, as a result of a functioning in-person church. Mm -hmm. That's why it was specific that way. Mm -hmm. Unlike then, this time it's not a shutdown by COVID. It's, it's, it's an attack by drought. So we will not focus like the Barikim Chungaji we are looking at the general community, mm -hmm. realizing that it's not just Sitam that is responding to this appeal. In Marsabit, for example, we have other agencies that are partnering. Mm -hmm. And so we trust that there are quite some responses nationwide. Mm -hmm. And if each one of those organizations is able to handle a particular segment, then we'll be able to handle and help all the communities. Mm -hmm. Yes. You said that you're going to be uh, making this kind of distribution in uh, seven months. Every For a period of seven months. For a period of seven months. Yes. So do you have any other long-term plan in case the rains fail? Long-term plan, we are hoping the rains will not continue failing. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we'll also ask the people is that we pray. If we make reference to Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13 to 14, mm -hmm. when God talks of when he shuts the heavens and there's no rain, this drought is an indicator probably that there is an anger on the part of God towards us. Mm -hmm. So we are a people of faith and we are trusting that God, if we beseech him and repent, as he says in that scripture, that he will be merciful and hear us. Yeah. I will answer whether there are any intentions to continue. Mm -hmm. In the immediate now, as we respond to the need, let's also pray. Let's hold on to that word. God is faithful mm -hmm. that if we repent, turn away from our wicked ways, mm -hmm. he will be merciful, he will hear us, and he will heal the land. Mm -hmm. Are there possibilities, just in case the rains don't come by next year, April? Progressively, we'll trust that our partnerships, we are monitoring, and we are giving a response and evaluation mm -hmm. that they will be able to extend with us for as long as the matter stays, but ideally, 
is that within these seven months of cushioning, that God in his mercy will have reversed the situation and yes. will be merciful to his people. Maybe as, as we wound up the interview, um, as a people, there are people who are really uh, suffering and are in distress yes. in this particular period. How do uh, we coexist with each other? How do we encourage the people that are going through these challenges? They don't have food. They don't have, uh, others don't even have shelter. How do we encourage them during this particular season as a church and uh, as the pastoral team? For the next four weeks in Sitam, we are doing Engage 3. And one of the lessons that was taught by, on CBS by Bishop Emeritus Oginde and also taught by the pastors in the assemblies is patriotism. Let's exercise patriotism, not just the love for the nation, but it's, let's also extend the love for our people. Mm -hmm. let's, let's shoulder who we can. Let's shield who we can. Let's hold who we can. Let's support who we can. Let's share what we can with the person whom we can share with. Mm. And if we were to approach this way, share half of what I would have taken with somebody else, I believe this will go a long way Thank you. with supporting our fellow Kenyan. They are our brothers and they are our sisters. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. That has been uh, Reverend Anthony McKenna, who is the Head of Social Action and Advocacy at Christ's Answer Answer Ministry, SITAM, just talking to us about the ongoing drought and how you can make a contribution uh, so that you can help the families that are struggling out there. I right now, I want to return it to Ken Kimani to continue with our broadcast. Thank you so much. My name is Tony Mondi. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tony, for that informative interview.